Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. If a Rivers leaves the AFC West, does it make a sound, Perna? Apparently not. And Rich Orenberger, former Chargers guard, was displeased with the way the Chargers handled the news that Philip Rivers would not return and will become a free agent this offseason. He also mentioned the organization sucked at relocating and parting ways with Eric Weddle, to which Eric Weddle agreed. So what does the damning of Rivers mean for the Chargers? Where will he play next? Is LA Tom Brady's next team? I hope so. And as a Broncos fan, I can say I will I will miss having Philip Rivers in the AFC West. Unlike those dirty, dirty, dirty Chiefs, he made it very easy for the Broncos, even when they were bad, to beat the Chargers. He had an uncanny ability to throw interceptions in the fourth quarter and let Peyton Manning lead one of the greatest comebacks against the Chargers we've seen when San Diego, they were San Diego at the time, had a 24-0 lead against the Broncos at halftime. So many great memories, Phil. So many. We'll discuss that today, and will Drew Brees return to New Orleans, or is he actually ready to retire? Some other NFL news, including Bill O'Brien Brian naming himself GM, and I have the video of Kareem Hunt begging the police officer who pulled him over to let him off with the speeding ticket. <clears throat> That's good sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, I do have Big Dick Patreon shoutouts for Colin Steele upping to $10. I love Tom Brady's deflated balls. Yeah, me too. Cortland Sons, epic. Gang Gang 2020, Jake Seifert, and Biracial Angel Cosplay. Dear, dear God, that sounds hot. Oh yeah, that sounds hot. Thank you for your donations. You can support this channel, patreon.com slash that's good sports. And Will and I have finally finished the next Patreon only episode, writing it. I just have to shoot it and get it, get it edited. So I will have that up as soon as possible. I know I keep teasing it and it keeps getting pushed back a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, but I got crazy busy. Uh, but the Patreon only episode coming soon. Texans head coach Bill O'Brien has named himself GM of the Houston Texans. Unlike the head coach slash GMs before him in Bill Belichick and Mike Shanahan, he's done absolutely nothing to earn this illustrious title. And I do have the exclusive footage on how Bill O'Brien convinced the Texans to let him be GM and coach. And I'm gonna warn you, it's a little bit shocking. And I can confirm the Pats are officially falling apart. Offensive line coach Dante Skarnecki confirms he is retiring. He is widely considered the best offensive line coach in the league. And that's despite the fact that I've never learned whether his last name is Skarnecki or Skarnekia. Unlike those defensive coordinators the Pats have, this will be a tough presence for the Patriots to replace. Second only to the soft finger of an Asian woman Mr. Kraft has been trying to replace for nearly a year now to fill the inside of his... Uh, you know what he needs to have filled. The Chargers really do suck as an organization. Phillip Rivers is the face of that franchise. I mean, he's the best quarterback the franchise has ever had that they didn't let go to New Orleans. And we learn that they are moving on from him through a Jay Glazer report instead of, oh, I don't know, a press conference with Philip Rivers or a joint statement from Rivers and the organization. Not that this is a shock. The writing was on the wall the moment Philip uprooted his giant family and moved them to Florida. My sister has one kid, and I've seen how hard it is to meet them for dinner at Chili's. You don't move 11 fucking people unless you're done with your current job. Even Jim Irsay, hopped up on Ed Hardy and painkillers, knew how to send off Peyton Manning the correct way. It's, um, to, um, um, and, uh, things, um, 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 I know, um, um, uh, um, uh, it, it's a Peyton. And it certainly has not been easy for me. 
Phillip Rivers is joining a crazy class of free agent quarterbacks. Drew Brees is a free agent, but he will not enter free agency. He's either returning to the Saints or retiring. But the list of possible free agent QBs is nuts. Tom Brady, Phillip Rivers, Teddy Bridgewater, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, Ryan Tannehill, and if for some reason Jerry Jones doesn't pay his quarterback, Dak Prescott. The best thing that could happen for the Chargers would be to land Tom Brady for a couple years and draft their future quarterback in this draft. Maybe that's Justin Herbert or Jalen Hurts. I like Hurts, but only because his last name suggests he's equipped to handle the pain that comes with playing for a franchise that has no fans. Brady to LA is a great move for the Chargers, not because I think he will win them more games than Rivers, but to sell at least one Chargers jersey in 2020, effectively doubling their total from 2019. People keep saying, just wait until the Chargers sign Tom Brady, Perna. Wait until you gotta play Brady. I hope they do. <laughs> Brady's more washed than the shores Rivers left in LA. Brady makes a lot of sense though for a team that somehow has to fill a massive new stadium despite not having anyone who actively enjoys watching them play football. The Brady Factor would suck in a lot of fair weather and casual fans until they realized that Tom Brady wasn't really that good for the Patriots last year, so why on earth would he be any good for the Chargers? Do you guys really think Tom Brady, who couldn't win a wild card game with the best defense he's ever had, a great offensive line, and the best coach in NFL history, is going to walk into LA and start cranking out wins with an entirely new offense, no home field advantage, and a bad offensive line? He's not Peyton Manning, so my answer is, Fuck no. I hope Brady comes to the AFC West for his career to end in ugly fashion. Nothing would make me happier. I will say if Brady goes to Tampa Bay, then he could win another Super Bowl. If you give him Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and that defense uh, Bruce Arians is building, I will hate Tom Brady even more, which I didn't think was possible. Phillip Rivers has moved his family to Florida, so I think Tampa is an option for him as well, assuming they move on from Jameis Winston, who is also a free agent, as I mentioned. Now, Dan Patrick hinted that the Indianapolis Colts could be in play for Phillip Rivers. Rivers would be more exciting than Jacoby Brissett, but I'm not sure he's an upgrade. You'll trade more points for more turnovers. But Rivers could easily win in that AFC South, which seems uh, underwhelming every single year. If you have watched this show for a while, then you know about bad poetry with Philip Rivers. A segment Good Morning Football blatantly stole from me. Mr. Bolo Tie, Mr. Has a Lot of Kids Guy, Mr. Never Too Shy to Cry to the Refs Guy, Mr. Offensive Skills are Verbose, but when under duress, it actually isn't close. Maybe you should pick up cigarettes, purchase some tobacco. What's the point of living if you can't even beat Joseph Flacco? Once Rivers lands with the new team, I will provide a fresh bad poetry to send him out of the AFC West in the way he deserves, with some fucking honor. Philip Rivers, you're never hurt. So what's your excuse for always throwing the ball? into the dirt. The New Orleans Saints believe Taysom Hill is the heir apparent at quarterback, but will keep a spot open for Drew Brees if Brees does want to come back. He's supposed to take about a month to make his decision. At the Pro Bowl, Russell Wilson gave up his starting spot to Drew Brees, which is a gesture you don't make if you think the dude is coming back. Brees is 41, Brady 43, and Rivers 38. And Brees played better than Phil and Tom and seems like the one QB who shouldn't retire. But maybe, unlike those other idiots, he doesn't want to watch himself start to suck. Now, Super Bowl media week kicked off Monday night and Tyreek Hill actually gave the best answer opening night when asked about facing uh, 49ers corner Richard Sherman. I'm gonna talk a lot of smack to you right now, okay? So check this out, get y'all cameras out, all right? Richard Sherman, I respect your game, man. Okay. Thank you for locking down all of the receivers you have faced. You are truly a GOAT, man, and I, and I really hope that we can jersey swap at the game. Much respect to you. Stay healthy, stay humble, and keep grinding, baby. I can't wait for the matchup. Oh, that is, that is, that is smart, Tyreek Hill. That is some next, you are, you are thinking. 
trying to trick all of us into believing you don't know what the word smack actually means. <laughs> You sly, sly devil. Speaking of misinformation, Chiefs defensive end Frank Clark stated that the 49ers haven't seen a D-end like me. Frank Clark, you played in Seattle for four years, so they literally saw you twice a season for four straight years. Frank Clark went on to say Chiefs fans are terrible at identifying Native American weaponry. Kyle Shanahan is a defensive mastermind who came out of nowhere with no ties to NFL coaching, and Andy Reid helped him construct the perfect vegan diet regimen. Frank Clark makes less sense than George Kittle listing wrestling moves. Uh, a couple spears and a couple uh, Stone Cold Stunners. Uh, maybe a pop-up powerbomb here or there. 49ers tight end George Kittle has been playing with the torn labrum for two full seasons. He refuses to get it fixed because he can't miss that much time in the weight room. Demarcus Lawrence played uh, with the torn labrum for two seasons as well. So kids, if you want to be one of the best athletes on your team, tear your labrum. Fuck it, tear both of your labrums. It clearly is a body part that does nothing for you, except makes you super strong and good at sports. Now finally, TMZ released the video of Kareem Hunt getting pulled over for speeding. Hunt was just given a speeding ticket, even though the police officer found weed and an open vodka bottle in the car. I knew this cop was going to be cool as soon as I heard that he was listening to Kings of Leon during the traffic stop. Had that cop been listening to Toby Keith or Brooks and Dunn, whatever the country kids listen to today, Kareem Hunt would have been in trouble. Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write you a traffic ticket, then I'll just seize this stuff, okay? All right. Fair, enough. Fair enough. I'm not gonna write you a weed ticket either. I think the telling thing uh, about this traffic stop was how much Kareem Hunt hates playing for the Browns. Should be playing for a freaking Super Bowl, man. Oh, dude. I just, Bro, I, it hurts. I was just thinking about that. It, it hurts my man. soul. Like, you don't even understand. Yes, Kareem, you could be playing for a Super Bowl, but you kicked a girl. Wait, uh, mm, I'm sorry, you're right. That's actually a great reason you should be playing in the Super Bowl as a member of the Chiefs. It doesn't make sense. I know, life's just not fair, Kareem. Having to play for the Browns because you kicked a girl is cruel and unusual punishment for your crimes. Real quick, uh, a lot of you have asked if I was going to talk about Kobe Bryant and his passing. And I appreciate you asking me that. I appreciate you thinking uh, my opinion or thoughts on the matter would be important enough to, to make a video about. But I don't talk about basketball here. I don't cover it. And I didn't ever really follow Kobe Bryant. So I just feel like me doing a whole video about Kobe and his tragic passing and the 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 helicopter crash that took nine people's lives isn't something that I really do here and it would feel kind of out of place me trying to force my opinions and thoughts about something that I feel like a lot of other smarter, uh, more emotionally sensitive and just better people than me have been covering and paying tribute to. Uh, I will say I think it's a, a tragedy. Obviously, I was shocked. I didn't know how to even process the information. And, uh, you know, that's coming from somebody who never felt like a connection to Kobe Bryant. If this happened to an NFL player or like somebody from the Broncos, I think I would be better equipped to kind of discuss it and, and what it means to me. But if I feel like I try to relate to it, it's going to be, I don't know, forced or, or something. And I don't want to do that. Not that I have that high of standards for this show, but uh, it's just, there's too many people involved for such a sad, terrible thing. I don't want to make it worse by saying something stupid. So I appreciate you guys asking, uh, but basically I just feel really bad for everybody who this situation has affected. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna if you wanna follow me at those places. The Super Bowl prediction episode is up. It's on the screen right now. You can watch it. It's got, you know, real football analytical prediction analysis by me. So, yeah. <laughs>